By the end of this video, you'll see how you can use the Microsoft Whiteboard on an iPad. I'll go through the features and some of the tips and tricks that I've discovered when working with Microsoft Whiteboard on an iPad, as well as how we can collaborate with others. They could either use their iPads or their phone or a computer, and we can all share a common whiteboard and interact with it. The whiteboard's a fantastic tool when it comes to working with the iPad because we have the pencil. So I can go in and I can use that as a stylus. I can use that to draw and collaborate and have all sorts of shapes. My name's Frank, I'm glad you're here. Let's go take a look at using Microsoft Whiteboard on the iPad. Now the whiteboard on the iPad is very similar to the desktop app. We'll open up a new whiteboard and you'll see that we have a lot of features that are the same as what we would have on the desktop. We have a timer we can put onto the surface. We can do things like have follow me so that uh, collaborators follow what I'm doing. I can log in with different accounts. I can go in and I can share the whiteboard. So let's do that. Let's send an email to Bruce Wayne and we'll have Bruce join us a little bit later on in the video. He'll collaborate with us and we'll send him a note and I'll set it so that Bruce can edit as well as view what we're doing. So I'll send a note to Bruce. He's going to be able to join this whiteboard as well as participate and put objects onto the whiteboard. So we'll send that off to Bruce. Now with the whiteboard, I can go into my settings and I can do things like export the whiteboard once I've finished. What's really nice is that this exports into my iPhotos so I can export it out there. I can do things like set up shapes and authorship so that if somebody comes in and is collaborating, I can see their name. So when Bruce joins us a little bit later on, we'll see what he's doing and we'll have attribution there. That's very handy. I can change the background so I can put graphs on there. I can change the different layouts. I can change the colors of the background. I'm just gonna keep this to a plain light gray background, which is my favorite background. Um, and I'm going to go in here and start working with the, with the whiteboard. Now, the pen menu is obviously the main menu of the whiteboard, and it's been updated recently as well. So we can see that I can change a vast variety of pen colors, either by spectrum, or I can go in and I can change it through a picker grid. So I can go in and I can pick a specific color, but it's effectively all of the colors in infinite canvas. I can change things like the thickness of the pen. I can go in and change things like the opaqueness of the pen. So you can see here I'm, I'm changing colors. I can change thickness. I can change all sorts of different attributes about the pen. There are some interesting things I can do as well. Like I can put arrowheads onto the pen. So uh, arrow and double arrows on the pens. And that can be handy if I'm trying to point to objects and I can remove that when I'm done. So you can see I've made quite a mess here, but you can see I've got all sorts of options when it comes to the pen. By tapping on the screen, I can clear the canvas completely. I get a context sensitive menu and I can clear the screen. I'll just put some, some uh, hello on here and I'll put some stuff on here, demo, just so that we have something on here. Now, when I go back to the pen menu here, you can see I can erase, so I can erase elements or everything. Um, clearing the screen also does that, so you have a different options if you want to clear the screen completely or if you just want to erase some elements. I'll put some more on here, so I'll say something like, my pen is handy. So I'm using my, my uh, Apple Pencil to do this. Aha, I can use the, the um, laser pointer to point out that I use the word pen, and when it comes to Apple, I should be using the word pencil. Now, here's an interesting thing. When I go to type, or when I go to write the word pencil, because I have auto shapes on, it recognized that P as an O. So I'm gonna go in and erase that. And then I'm gonna carefully write in the word pencil. And there we go. So my pencil is handy. And I can go things, I can go to the highlighter and I can highlight a specific word. I can change the thickness of the highlighter, the colors of the highlighter. I can choose many, many different highlighter colors. And this is very handy if I wanna go in. Now, notice as well I have the ruler. The ruler works fantastic on an iPad because I can use my fingers to move it around and then I can take a pen and I can draw lines using the ruler. But I can actually spin the ruler with my fingers, which is very, very useful. And so I can choose an object here again. I can go in, I can choose angles in here. I can draw all sorts of, you know, very straight lines, which I cannot draw personally, but with a ruler I can, so I can go in and use the ruler. This is obviously very helpful. If I've changed the background to graph paper, and then I use the ruler, I can use this uh, for math teaching or anything where I wanna do graph paper and, and straight lines. So 
very useful. And there's measurement ticks on the ruler as well. So if I go in, I can also put notes and you'll notice that I can put individual notes or I can put a grid of notes onto the surface here. So when I put an individual note, both the iPhone and the iPad are a little different in that you'll get a note dialog box and you can type into it. And with the iPad, you can use the pencil and it'll convert it to text. So you can write your note, then insert it into the whiteboard. And now you can do all of the things to modify it. You can like it. You can put reactions on here. You can do all sorts of things with the, um, with the notes. You can put a reaction that you drag on. So there's built-in reactions to the notes and there's also reactions in the menu bar at the bottom that you can bring onto the note. You can bring in a grid of notes, so then you can modify these. You can put multiple notes in here as well. You can zoom in and zoom out. Now it is handy, if you go to 100%, it'll go wherever you are, it'll zoom into 100%. And you can also go in and you can use the fit button in order to fit all objects onto the screen at once. So again, I can go into the note that I just created. I can go in and type in a note here, and I can, uh, even go in and write a note. So it's the same thing. So if I have a note here, either I add a note or if I've got an existing note, I can go and edit it and I can put text in the same way. So here I have text, I've typed in the text. Now here's something that's kind of interesting when it comes to the iPad. So I have the text, I can change the colors, all the things you'd expect if you're typing or writing text in here. But with the context sensitive menu, if I press and hold and choose text here, same thing, I can put in text and um, I, can, I can duplicate notes, do all that sort of thing. But what's interesting here with the text is that if I'm inserting free form text with the context sensitive menu, where I press and say, put some text in here, it'll be a little bit different. It's got a different font. Now, text generally doesn't have fonts. So in most whiteboard, uh, most of the times when I'm using the whiteboard, I either get the standard font and that's my only choice. But this is a case where if I use the context sensitive, if I press and hold on the whiteboard, anything I put there is a slightly different font. And that's really interesting. I'm hoping that eventually Microsoft has a lot of different fonts. I can put shapes onto the iPad whiteboard. So here you have shapes again, you have colors, you can change the color of the borders. You can do all sorts of things. You have text in the middle as well. So I can go into the text, I can tap the pencil button, go into the text and I can type or write text in there. And now I have text in the shape. So it's in there, I can change the outline. The outline is a little difficult to see if you're not, unless you're zoomed in a little bit, but it's really good if you're exporting something because then it looks really nice and sharp. You can put a high contrast outline onto the shapes that you create. I'll just zoom in a little bit here and it's an infinite canvas so I can scroll around as I need to. Um, now the other thing is with the shapes, I can have straight lines. So for example, if I try to draw a line, I could use the ruler, but if I want to, uh, you know, if I draw it, you'll notice it's a little bent because I can't draw, you know, straight. But if I use shapes, then I can draw straight because I have the option of a straight line, a dotted line, or lines with arrowheads on them as well. So you have a lot of different options there, and that saves you from having to either bring out the ruler or, or not draw a straight line. We also have templates. Now, templates are something that do take up a bit of real estate. I wouldn't normally add a template to an existing whiteboard. I might start a whiteboard with a template. And so I can preview the template, get a description of what that template is. And you'll see here that when I insert it, it actually is quite large in comparison to the other objects that I've drawn on the whiteboard. Now that makes sense because I'm going to zoom into different areas, probably using the follow me feature. I can zoom into different areas and then I will fill those in. And a lot of times this is where collaboration will come into play. If I don't want it, I can just use the lasso and I can go ahead and lasso everything and just delete. And then I can zoom back into the objects that I put on there. Now, when I'm using the whiteboard in this way, um, let's say I wanted to have other people follow me, I'd press the follow me and then everybody would follow me. And if I want to have collaboration, I'd use collaboration. Now here I can also go into the insert menu. I can bring in different images, documents, YouTube videos. Now anything on my iPad or any shared location, I can go and grab a document from there. This is really handy. I'm going to grab an image. 
So I'll grab an image that I have. Now I'm not going to grab an image off of my iPad. I'll actually go back to grab an image out of my photo library. And I can even take a picture directly at the time that I'm working with the iPad. This is very, very useful if I want to take a picture and then have a discussion around it. So you can see I've got a silly picture here that I've taken of myself. Um, and you can see that I can then go and make modifications. We could insert a document in here. So a good example would be, for example, if I have, um, you know, my OneDrive, Microsoft OneDrive, or any files on my iPad, I can bring in a PDF. So let's say, for example, we had a broken part. I could take a picture of the broken part, put that on the whiteboard. I could then take a PDF about that part, put it on the whiteboard, and then I could collaborate with others to discuss, you know, why that part broke. I could even put in something like a YouTube video. So maybe I have a YouTube video on how to repair something. But in my case, I'll put in one of my YouTube videos because, you know, might as well. I'll put in a whiteboard tutorial video. I just insert that and that's on the whiteboard and it'll also play from the whiteboard. So if you click on it, it'll invoke the, the YouTube uh, video so that you can then watch it. I can do other things like a link. So I'll put a link to my website, my blog website, which is www.franksclass.ca. And you can see that then puts in the, the URL and an image because I have a favicon on there and it has an image. And if I click on it, it takes me directly to my blog webpage. So you can see that this then becomes a very useful tool for gathering things, gathering thoughts. So even though it's great for collaboration, it can also be very useful uh, for you to take notes. So you can use it because you can put so many different types of objects on there. I do have some other videos here on the channel where I talk about different note-taking apps, of course. Let's just make sure Bruce got that invitation. I did send it at the beginning of the video here, but I'm just gonna make sure Bruce gets his email. So now on another computer, Bruce has just received an email and is going to be able to click on the link and we should see Bruce arrive shortly and start working on this whiteboard. So you can see I'm just waiting for Bruce to arrive. Aha, Bruce has arrived. You can see that he's been announced. His icon appears in the top corner. And now when he moves around the whiteboard, you can see that the cursor has his name on it. So he's just inserted a note. So Bruce is putting a note onto the whiteboard. He's typing on his computer and I don't see it until Bruce is finished. So Bruce is in the process of completing a note. Maybe he's writing me something about um, how silly I look in the picture or maybe he's writing me something. Oh, oh, he's not Batman. So he's telling me that he's not Batman, although he did make a spelling mistake. So I could get the laser pointer and point that out. But given Bruce's background, I might not want to say too much. So, uh, We'll do that. So Bruce is, looks like he's going to make a comment on the photo. So one of the things that Bruce has on the desktop application is down by the pen menu is a comment menu. So he's going to go in. Now even though I don't have the comment bubble on my iPad whiteboard, that's a new feature. There's a little comment bubble. You can see that Bruce did have the comment bubble and it does appear on my whiteboard. And so he went there and he made a comment apparently about my forehead. Now again, if we had a situation where I'd taken a picture of a broken part and a PDF, imagine the comments we could put there, we could highlight, we could collaborate. It becomes a very useful tool for making sure that we're collaborating and everything is, is working well. What a fantastic way to use your iPad to collaborate with others. The Microsoft Whiteboard software really does do a great job of that. Let me know in the comments below if you use an iPad and if you've used Microsoft Whiteboard and some of the things that you found useful as well. I have another video on how to use Microsoft Whiteboard on a computer, check it out. And I have another one on how you can use Microsoft Whiteboard on your phone. So you can have people using different devices to collaborate, communicate, all on that Microsoft Whiteboard product. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.